In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how 2D machining capabilities of PowerMill have been massively improved. You can now interactively detect features, create and edit them in the feature editor, and machine them with specific toolpaths. So as you can see on my screen, I've got a 2D part. On the left hand side, my toolpaths are already ready. I've got my tools and an empty feature group. So to detect or create features, all you have to do is right click on your newly created feature group and enter the feature editor. Once you've done that, you can either create features manually or interactively detect them. So if I click on detect features, PowerMill will ask me to choose the mode. So if I want to choose single features or basically select a feature and every other features in it or select similar features. So for instance, if I click on similar and I hover with my mouse over this pocket, you can see that the other three are or will be created as well. Same for this or for this boss. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to create single features and I'm going to create some manually. So I'm just going to select this boss here, this small pocket, one of these, one of these, and then this big boss, both the external part and the internal pocket. So if I'm happy with this, I can click on accept and then I can manually edit these features. So for instance, to add the chamfer to this boss, all I have to do is double click on the newly created feature and go fillets, chamfer for the top and add a one mil chamfer because I know that that is one millimeter. I can now click on close and do the same for this boss here. So fillets, top, chamfer, one millimeter. And then I can click on close. So I'm happy with this. The next thing I want to show you is how you can create features manually. So first of all, I'm going to create an open pocket here. So to create open pockets in PowerMill 2017, all you need to do is to create a rectangular pocket and then create open regions. So I'm going to go create a rectangular pocket. First of all, I'm going to go origin and set my origin to be to the top right corner. So I can click here and the feature is created already automatically. Obviously, you can edit the dimensions if you want, the width, the length or the height. But I'm happy with this, so I'm going to click on apply and then close the form now. Now, before accepting the changes, I need to create two open regions here. So I'm going to go edit open regions, create a new open region, I'm going to select my pocket and then click on the two key points here. Then I need another one, so I'm going to go create a new open region again and I'm going to select my two points again. I can now click on this green tick to accept my changes and my pocket is now open. Now, before closing the form, I want to show you how you can create this circular pocket here. So first of all, I'm going to select a view from the top I'm going to zoom in on the pocket and I'm going to create a circular one. Now, as you can see, I can create it anywhere, but to make sure that I create it on the right place, I'm going to change my origin again and select it to be here. So as you can see, it's not really the right dimensions, but we can always edit it by changing the height diameter or curve Z for this pocket. So first of all, I'm going to increase the height here just to have it match with the actual geometry. So as you can see, I already had a 0.5 millimeters fillet on the form and that's because Palmer remembers the settings from the last session. So if I now go to the dimensions, just to make sure, as you can see, the pocket is a bit too deep. So I can now change the height be seven and a half as you can see it snaps to the end of the pocket to the bottom of it so i can now accept these changes 
and I can finally close this form, so the feature editor, select an ISO 1 view, and as you can see, I've got all of the features that I need for the purposes of this demonstration. So if I click on the strategy selector, you will see that you can choose among more than 10 toolpaths, to machine faces, pockets, slots, chamfers, to treadmill, and so forth. So I'm now going to show you individually all of these toolpaths. So as you can see, I've got different types of toolpaths. And the first one I'm going to show you is a face milling strategy. So I've closed the form on purpose just to show you that you can now reopen it, right-clicking Feature Editor, and any feature that you want to add will be added to this feature group. So I want to create a face feature. But if I click here, that will be applied to this face here, but I just want to mill the top of my block. So I'm going to display my block and click on the top of my block. And as you can see, the feature has been created on top of it. So I can click on apply and close the form down to accept my changes. Close the feature editor again. And now I can start to think about my toolpaths. So as you can see, the first one is a face mill strategy. And I'm going to machine this with a 50 mm end mill. So if I activate this toolpath and go to my settings, as you can see, there is a features tab here where I can click and PowerMill will automatically see which features are machinable with this current strategy. So if I click on 9, that is the face, I can now click on calculate. And as you can see, I'm milling the part, only four passes. If I display the leads and links, you will see that the part is machined efficiently. So I now can think about the other strategies. This is an open pocket area clearance strategy. So basically what I'm going to machine with it is this open pocket. I'm going to make the block invisible again, and I'm going to activate this new strategy, which I'm going to machine with a 10 mm end mill. So if I go into my settings, the features tab, and you will be able to pick manually which features you want to machine. So I want to machine this open pocket, which is feature number seven. In this case, I'm machining with raster. Click on calculate. And as you can see, the tool goes back and forth. It doesn't really approach too close to the walls. And that is because I want to show you the profiling toolpath for open pockets. So if I now activate this new strategy, go into the settings, you will see that this toolpath has been conceived to machine basically the sides of pockets, so to profile them pockets. So if I now go back into my features, select, and you can see is number seven, as I showed you earlier on, you can now click on calculate, And as you will see, the walls have been machined as well now. So, the next two strategies will machine the big pockets. So obviously you can select the features you prefer. If I activate this one and go into the settings again, I can pick the features that I want to machine with my 8mm end mill. So features, I can pick them either here or on the screen as I showed you earlier on. So I want to machine this one, this one, this one over here, and the inside of this boss. If I'm happy, I can click on Calculate, and the pockets have been machined. As you can see here and on the left hand side of my screen, I've chosen Offset this time. So I can close this down, and now I need to profile these pockets. So I'm going to activate the profiling toolpath, go into the settings, features, and we're going to pick the same features again. And I can now click on calculate, 
and as you can see the pockets have been profiled. So we only need to machine this small pocket now, we need to machine the sides of it, so to profile this pocket, and we need to machine the chamfers on this boss and on this boss and then on this pocket again. So I'm going to activate the area clearance strategy, go into my settings and again go features and pick my feature. Again I've got offset selected, I calculate now and the area clearance strategy has worked. I can now activate the profiling one, go into my settings and machine the sides of this pocket so I remember there is feature 8 so I can click on it and as you can see it's highlighted on my screen I can calculate this and close this down finally we need to machine the chamfers so there is now a dedicated toolpath for chamfers so if I activate it and go into my settings You will see this feature chamfer milling form that I've already filled. If you go into the features, you can pick the features if you want to machine. You can click on calculate, and as you will see, they are machined with a single pass.